everyone go around and introduce yourself, please, and give like a fun fact about yourself that maybe the listener wouldn't know, even if they do know you. Okay. Um, I'm Megan Myrdal. I'm uh, one of the co-founders of Food of the North. Uh, my fun fact, I'm a twin. And at the time that I was born, I was the largest twin born in Grand Forks Hospital. Really? Big, big twins. And so, like, I don't know if we still hold that stat, but I tell people that yeah, I was I the would, biggest yeah. twin ever. Born. I would definitely hold on to that. Like every time you go into the clinic, like anything we need to know about your medical past, I was the largest twin ever born at the Allergies, Grand Forks Hospital. No <laughs> issues, health issues, no. But I was the biggest twin ever born. Interesting. All right. This is a fun fact. I'm Gia Rassier. I'm a co-founder of Food of the North as well. My fun fact. I was homeschooled. I was homeschooled. (laughs) That's a pretty random fun fact. Like all the way through high school? Yes. Did you ever take any classes? I did take some classes, but I have two diplomas. One was made on Microsoft Word. Really? (laughs) That's the one that's framed, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. It's good that there's <laughs> templates out there for that, yes. isn't it? So that, oh, that's very cool. I had uh, one of our previous guests, Randy Olson. Well, oh, now I Randy Heinold is. Love her. Uh, was homeschooled, but then she also got to take theater classes. So she kind of got the best of all worlds. Totally. With that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. People well, don't maybe usually if you did lead some research with that. on the guests, Tucker. <laughs> And last but certainly not least. I am Annie Wood. I serve on the board for Food of the North. Been able to work with Gia and Megan on some projects over the last couple of years. And in January, it became official. Ooh. They're like, we like you enough. You want to serve on the board? Yeah. yeah. I'll give you a, a food-related fun fact. I can actually peel a banana with my feet. Really? True story. Do you peel it in the way that apparently everyone's supposed to peel a banana, but none of us actually do, which well, is like... bottom up? Yeah. Uh, well, with my toes, it's easier to grab the top of the banana, so mm-hmm. I do peel it that way. I so wish we had a banana right now. This is a podcast, not a you know <laughs> TV show. So when JJ gets a TV show, I will be your first guest. Oh. And you'll peel, you'll peel a banana live on the, on the will, show? I will. I will. I have done it for talent shows. I have done it in a variety of... Ways, shapes, and forms. Sometimes you get kids to eat their fruits and vegetables. So, how long have you had this talent? <laughs> well, um, so at the lake as a child, um, my cousin had recently learned that monkeys peel bananas with their feet. And he was like, "We should try this." So we scamper into the cabin, we steal the bananas off the counter, we go back out to the dock, and we're all like smooshing bananas and trying to peel them. Um, and my mom was so upset because we had ruined breakfast for the next day, but. Must be a genetic, like, family trait. We've all got these weird, long finger toes. And so we could all do it. (laughs) So there are some great photos uh, from that day of just smooshy bananas and a lot of peels and just eight-year-olds with a lot of mashed bananas all over the dock and probably my angry mother in the background. We had a family friend who could cut a deck of cards with one hand, Ooh. which was like, you think, oh, that's not such an amazing thing. But to watch it, like to how to manipulate like half a deck of cards while not like dropping, dropping the them, half. it was really amazing. So you and she could get together and tour that act. Oh, and yeah. I would pay money to go see that. <laughs> Isn't there like a Fargo famous thing? Like that would be. You should sign. The FMCT does that. Sign up next year. We judge this year. Next year I'll be on stage. (laughs) Yeah, there you go. Most random talent. (laughs) Mm -hmm. If there's, if they start giving out awards for most random talent, I'm in. Uh, you saw the acts. Like it could be a little bit of anything. Like true. I feel like I would need like a glittery jumpsuit to really sell the banana. Yeah, you probably need someone in a like a monkey costume too. Ooh, like yeah. a like a big gorilla costume. Right. Or and like, then a Chiquita banana gal as yeah, well. Like, yeah. Bring back my backup dancers. Mm-hmm. We'll uh-huh. do that. We'll do that. And mm-hmm. I will. Okay. Mm-hmm. We'll start practicing. Our, our first <laughs> limber TV up my ad. toes and you know be ready. Yeah. Get a pedicure. Nimble up. There's a, a series of commercials back in the day for a restaurant in Fargo called Smokies that were the worst commercials ever. Do you remember those commercials? Anyone I ever feel see like those? I was just about to sing the jingle. Yeah, Smokies brings, brings back, back the, the good, good old days. days. Yes. But I remember those vividly for the poor production quality <laughs> and for the fact that they were just like, ah, we need to make an ad. It does. We don't need any actors. It's like, oh, yeah, let's grab Jim. Jim's got the, you know, an off day today. And so I feel like if you did include that in a commercial, people could be talking about it 20 years later on whatever kind of medium we're consuming at that point. I, you know, this this could be the legacy I leave. 
I like that we're having a brainstorming session yeah. about Annie's future career in mm-hmm. <laughs> banana, banana peeling. Toe peeling. <laughs> Her first uh, television ad. Yeah, right? It should be out yeah. there. And really, I mean, are we really producing television ads now? We're really saying we're going to make a commercial that'll be on the web mm-hmm. and then maybe mm-hmm. we'll put it on KVRR at some point. At some point know, down we, the road. If we decide we've got some freebies. <laughs> so let's talk about food. Let's talk about the purpose. Let's talk about the passion. Uh, behind forming this organization that it it used to go by a different name, correct? It did. So we started our organization in the summer of 2015. So we're almost coming up on five years now, which is kind of crazy. Thank you. Um, But we originally founded our organization as Ugly Food of the North. Um, So about five years ago, the Red River Market got going up in Fargo. And for those who aren't familiar, it's a great downtown farmer's market that's just become a wildly successful place for people to buy local food and um, a whole lot of other things. Um, But so when that farmer's market got started, we um, got to know some of the farmers that were selling their produce there. And we'd be chatting with them and saying like, oh my gosh, everything looks so beautiful. Your produce is so amazing. And they're like, well, this isn't everything that we grow. We like some of the stuff that comes out of our farms is really funky looking, but nobody will buy that. And so we kind of like, started looking into this issue of this cosmetically imperfect produce and realized that it's like a pretty significant contributor on the food waste issue. And um, in the United States, 40% of food goes to waste. We um, don't eat our leftovers. We're poor planning on shopping. And then we also don't buy cosmetically imperfect produce. So we decided to partner up with the Red River Market and do an ugly food day at the Red River Market. So ask the farmers to bring all that funky looking produce and encourage people to buy it. And then a couple days later, we did a community potluck at Drecker Brewing and said, hey, with whatever you bought at the farmer's market, bring it to um, Drecker and make it into something fun and delicious and show people how good this food is and how um, great it can taste. And um, we ended up, it was supposed to be a one-time thing. We're like, let's just do a one thing at the farmer's market and then do this potluck to like bring some awareness to this issue. And, and it ended up being on the front page of the Fargo Forum. A hundred people showed up at the potluck and we're like, oh, like mm-hmm. this is something people are interested in and want to know more about. Um, so we kept hosting events and we, a lot of them were food waste driven, but we kind of evolved to just having more conversations about food in general, asking farmers to speak about what they're growing and what they're doing, asking chefs to talk about how they're preparing food, how they're sourcing locally, how they're being sustainable, how they're addressing food waste. And um, we kind of just kept doing that. And um, in four and a half years, we, uh, we can talk a little bit more about some of our other projects, but we were pretty uh, active and doing a lot of things. And we realized that our ugly food name Um, didn't really capture everything that we had going on. So we rebranded about a year ago to be called Food of the North. But we still do ugly food and we still do food waste education because we had people who were like, we love the ugly food. We love your logo. And we're kind of sad when we rebranded, which was kind of interesting, too, because you don't realize that people have like an affinity towards your brand. But we had a few that really cared. Um, So, yeah, so we're, we're Food of the North now. 